Hey, Matt Allington here. Today I'm going to show you how to use Query by Example to extract some data from a web page. Now, specifically, I'm interested in the Power BI blog. So let me come here, Power BI blog. And I can never remember the URL, but here it is. So here's the official Microsoft Power BI blog. And the objective here is that I want to know what is the release date of every new version of Power BI Desktop. And so every month, it's normally Amanda. Amanda comes in and releases a new blog article. And if I sort of scroll through these pages a little bit down here, here it is. November desktop release, 13th of November. So December 1 is due to drop any day is my guess. So let me come back here and I'm going to grab this URL and I want to extract all of these blog articles and their dates so that I know when the new desktop version is released. So I'm going to copy that. Great practice is to come and find the page first. Then I'm going to load up Power BI, get data from web, paste my URL and let's have a look. Okay, now in this case, Power Query has only found this um, header HTML table. So in this case, for this website, we can't just use traditional Power Query. You need to use this add table using examples. So this is a relatively new feature um, that allows you to specify what you're looking for from the web page and Power Query will help you get hold of that. I'm just gonna put this in full screen to give me a bit of screen real estate. And so this is the latest release. So all I have to do in this column here is I have to type in this text because this is the name of the blog. So I'm gonna type in Power BI. Now, this is actually a little bit of a problem with this IntelliSense coming up above the screen. Um, I think that will get improved over time, but I'm pretty sure this is what we need. So let's have a look. So that's the text that I've added into this column. Now in this second column, I wanna see the date and the name of the person that released it. So December 10, 2018. So I just type in December 10, 2018 by Ben. So that's what I wanna see in column two. So now I just need to keep helping Power Query. So it's given that the IntelliSense covers this, I just wanna be clear. So Business Application Summit Atlanta. So let's type this in. Microsoft, there it is. Oh, this time the IntelliSense has gone to the bottom, so that's much better. So I want that one. And notice now how it's it's picked up the pattern already and it's now picking up all of the future ones. I just need to get help with this date. So this is December by uh, Miguel. And now it seems to be working. So I can just click OK. And now I'm going to edit this query and sometimes the window is in the wrong order so i've got two windows here i just bring the power query window to the front so here's my uh, query that's just been created so this is bringing the queries from the first 10 pages so i'm going to set this so that it doesn't load and i'll give it a name this will be my uh, sample query Okay, now this is only one page, but I want it to work for more than one page. So if I come back here, you recall before when I clicked two, it gave me another page of items. Now, notice the, how the URL changed here. It's got this question mark page two, but on the home page, it didn't have that. So I'm going to um, pass a parameter in a moment to specify the page. But the first thing I'd like to check is, what would happen, I wonder, if I say page one? And as it turns out, I can use this parameter on page one, even though the default page didn't have that. So this is the URL I'm gonna use. I'm gonna copy that. And I'll come back here to my query, and I'm just gonna change the initial step here. Now, to see the editing bar here, um, you just come under view, turn on the formula bar. You can also bring up this step by clicking on this cog. I tend just to use the editing bar. So I'm gonna use that original URL and I'm gonna replace it like that. So I could do it that way. In fact, now I'm thinking about it, what I really need to do is I click on this cog, turn it to an advanced, um, an advanced URL. And what I wanna do is I wanna make this part of the URL uh, parameter. Now I can't do that because I don't have a parameter yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come over here and create a new parameter and this will be my page number and I'm going to make it text because I'm going to concatenate these together and 
it would be better as text and I'll just give it a value of one to start off with. Okay, so now I've got my parameter. Now I can come back in here and say, I want this an advanced query. I want the second part to be a parameter, which is the page number. And I'm just going to remove this number one now. So what will happen now, if I have a look at this URL preview, that what it does is it joins the page number parameter on after this equal sign. So now this gives me a query where I can pass a parameter to. So let's see how that works. So um, if I had a one, in, which is the default at the moment, it works like this. But if I change this to a two, hit enter, this query will update for the second page and so on. So you can see how that's now working. All right, now the next thing I need to do is I want to turn this query into a function because now this query knows how to process a single page. I'm going to turn it into a function so that it will process multiple pages. So let me do that. I'm going to right click, create a function. The function is going to be named, I'll just call it fn combine. You can call it really whatever you want. So now I've got a function and I can pass a parameter to this function and it will execute the query and give me the results. So that's a repeatable function now. I don't need that, so I'll delete that. So there's my function. The next thing I need to do is I need to know a list of page numbers. So I want to pass a list of numbers and get the function to complete the task for every page number that I pass to it. Now there's a few ways of doing this, but I'm going to create a list. So I'm going to do a blank query. And I'm going to give this a name. This will be my release dates. This is the name of my final query. And I'm going to do a manual step. I'm just going to say equal. Now this um, curly braces is the list uh, syntax. So I could say I want a list from 1 to 10. And that will give me a list of numbers from 1 to 10. And um, I did do some pre-work on this. So I've, I'll go to one to 40 that'll give me basically 40 pages of blog releases from Microsoft this is currently a list I need to turn it into a table so now I've got a table of numbers I'm going to make this text because we need to pass text through to the function so now I've got the values of the page number that I want to use and now I can add a column invoke my custom function and here is my function name and I'm going to pass this page number column one into the function. So I do that and now this function will go ahead and execute. It's um, given me a table. Now I can extract the data from the query. So I'll do that now. And there's the data. I don't need this anymore so I'm going to remove this. This is my um, title of the blog article and I really need to split this and um, I'd like to have the date and the name of the person that released the blog article so now I'm going to split it by delimiter so I'm going to go transform split columns by delimiter but I'll do something a little bit different it's not by a single character I'm going to say custom I want to split it whenever you find space by space right so I can use multiple characters to split by and that extracts that by and actually gives me what I need. So this is now the date and this is the author. So this is currently all blog articles. Um, I don't want all blog articles. I just want the ones about the Power BI desktop. So this one here is an example. So what I might do is I'll go Power BI desktop. So what if I filter, text filter, I'll say I could do begins with, but I'm not sure that it's always like that. So I'm going to say contains Power BI Desktop. This is case sensitive. So let's see how that goes. So you can now see the releases sometimes. So Amanda's done most of them. Maybe someone else does it. I'm not sure. So I've got to be careful here. It also seems that it ends with feature summary or has feature summary. So what I might do is I'll modify this and I'll say it also has to contain feature summary. Let's have a look. So it looks like it is always Amanda. Here's all the releases going back to November 
2016. So this is what I need. Now for analysis purposes, what I'd like to do is I'm going to extract the day of week. I need to go add column, extract the day of week. So that's the day number of week. I hate this zero based index. Um, maybe you two do as well. Um, I could do a couple of steps, but I like hacking the code. So I'm going to come up here. This creates the day of week using a zero based index. I'm just going to add one to it. So that'll give me one through seven. Now I also have to extract the day name. So that's this one. Okay. Um, just to be efficient, what I might do is transform extract first characters three. Just give me the short name. So that's nicer. And I also want to know the day of month. So I'll do an add column, date, day. I guess it's just day. Okay, there we go. So it's just the day. All right, so that's pretty much what I need for my query. So I'm going to go file, close and apply. Okay, so 21 rows. Interesting thing about this is that it actually seems to be slower when I'm actually running the query than it did in preview. I'm not quite sure why that is. I think it was November 16, so it should be about 25, 24, 25 rows, something like that, I guess. Okay, so there we have it. Now let's build a bit of a visualization on this. So I'll bring the title of the blog and I'll bring the date in. Uh, this is the auto time intelligence, not a big fan of that. I'm going to turn that into the date. Okay, now let's bring the day name in and the day number. So here's the day number. I'll put some conditional formatting on that so that I can see sort of how long into the month do we normally get the release. I might do a nice Power BI yellow. Okay, so you can see that it's fairly early in the month. What I might do is just write a couple of DAX formulas. So let's work out what the average day number is. So we'll call this um, mean day of release. That would be equal just the average of the day number. So I'll put that in as a card. And because that number is not going to change. So the average day looks like it's 9.52 days into the month. Let me copy that card. Let's have a look at the median day. So is equal to a median, I guess, of the day column. And if I'm going to, re I've copied that card, I just have to replace it like this. So it's on average, it's the eighth, well not the average, on the median, it's the eighth day of the month. Uh, be interesting to see a little table that shows all the day names. Now this is not sorted correctly, so we need to go day name, modeling, sort by the day of week. So that should sort this correctly for me. Let's bring in, let's check how many times each day occurs. So I'll bring in the day, instead of adding them up, we'll count. Okay, so it looks like Monday's the biggest day. Maybe we put some conditional formatting on the background. Count of day name. So there we go. So it looks like Monday's the most released day, followed by Tuesday, Wednesday, not too often on a Friday. Average is nine and a half day of the month. The median most common day is the eighth day. And here's the profile of the day in the month. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. If you liked this video, I have a full series of online videos that will teach you how to use Power Query to its fullest potential. So you can check that out on my website.